Abbey Tales, Mungo's Missing Shoe. Hello, my name is Nicola and this is Ruth, the Abbey Cat, with eyes of yellow and a coat of jet black. She likes to show visitors this and that. An abbey is an old building made of stone where monks lived, worked and called it home. Here is the door. It is big and old and made of wood. Shall we open it? Ruth thinks we should. Do you think it is a creaky door as it is so old? Shall we try making a creaky door noise after three? One, two, three. Ah. What is behind the door? I wonder what we shall see. This room is the dormitory, the abbey bedroom where the monks would sleep at night. It looks very different today from when Brother Mungo was here. There would have been beds of straw in rows with blankets, covers and pillows. Although the monks were not allowed to speak, it would have been a bit noisy, especially if any of the monks snored. <coughs> Do you have to share a bedroom with anyone? Are they noisy? Even during the night, the monks would have to wake up for prayers. They wouldn't have had an alarm clock. They would have been woken by a bell ringing, <coughs> calling them down the night staircase, a special stair that led from their bedroom into the church. Can you see what Brother Mungo is wearing? It's a tunic called a habit made from woolen cloth to keep the monks warm. The monks would also have worn shoes made of soft leather, like this one, for the floor of the abbey would have been of cold stone. Can you imagine being warm and cosy in bed when suddenly you have to get up in the dark and find your shoes when you hear the bell ringing like this? There's a famous French song about a monk having to wake up. Do you know it? Faire Jacques, Faire Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonny lemartinas, sonny lemartinas, ding dang dong, ding dang dong. I think it's time for a story, for there are stories everywhere. This is the story of Brother Mungo and the Missing Shoe. Would you like to hear it? I think Brother Mungo and Ruth would. One dark, cold winter's night, Brother Mungo was in the dormitory, but he couldn't sleep. He turned from one side to the other side, but he still could not sleep. He tried counting sheep. Shall we help Brother Mungo count sheep? One, two, three, four, five, but he was still awake. And then he felt something walking across his feet. He sat up. Meow. It was Ruth, the Abbey cat, who liked Brother Mungo very much. She curled up on his feet, making them warm and cosy. And Brother Mungo drifted off to sleep. When suddenly, <coughs> It was the bell calling Brother Mungo for prayers. He woke up and put his feet on the cold stone floor, oh, put his shoes on and went down the night stair for prayer. When Brother Mungo returned, he was so tired, he fell fast asleep. And then it was the bell calling for more prayers. It was still dark and Brother Mungo woke up and put his feet on the cold stone floor. Ah, oh, but where were his shoes? He reached under the bed, to the left, to the right, but still no shoes. In the middle, he felt the soft, warm fur of Ruth, the Abbey cat, when suddenly he felt his shoelace. 
He followed the shoelace all the way to Ruth. She had been sleeping on his shoes all the time. Brother Mungo happily went down the night stairs wearing his warm and cosy shoes. I think Ruth and Brother Mungo liked that story. Ruth would like to take us through another door. I wonder what we shall see. But that, my friends, is another story. So it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Brother Mungo, and goodbye from Ruth the Abbey Cat.